Hi, welcome. This is going to be a series of perhaps two lectures on Cauchy's theorem, a global version. And the proof is due to the proof I'm going to give is due to Dixon, which appeared in 1971, uh, almost 50 years ago. The proof is so simple. It uses very interestingly whatever I learned about what I used to call the Cauchy theory. Like you know Cauchy's theorem for charge shaped domains and then Cauchy integral formula for charge shaped domain. From that we deduced from Lewis theorem, Morera's theorem, etc. Right? We also saw any Cauchy type integral is an analytic function outside the track of the path. You will be surprised these are the things which are used in his proof. In fact, it's a fantastic proof, but it's a little uh, tricky and delicate. Okay, one has to check various things very carefully, but the proof is, believe me, it's really simple, and as he says, it's a brief proof also. Uh, and in fact, he also remarks, uh, his version is so simple that there is no reason why one should work with homotopy version because homotopy version is subsumed in this and you get a much simpler proof and the most general form you get okay so I am very excited to give so let us go through the proof okay and I am sharing two references one is a reference in to my book I think section 12.6 or something 12 point whatever it is we will see that and there I have slightly modified Dixon's proof, but the original Dixon's proof I have given the reference and that PDF file, a two page PDF file is downloadable. I found it through internet and I, I had given the reference also. So after going through my lectures, it may be worthwhile for you to read the original article because this will also be stepping stone for you guys who want to pursue mathematics as a career. How research articles are written and how much one has to work out to understand all the details okay so this is the way you will help in fact when I learned the proof I think I was essentially a couple of years after my MSc around 75 74 75 or some sort of thing when I tried to learn the proof it is just two page it was really fantastic I was excited I thought I understood but the more I thought about the proof I found there are a lot of subtle arguments which I missed on the first when I thought I had understood. Okay, let me see whether I can explain all those things to you and pass on the excitement to you also. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. So, this is the reference I had given a brief proof of Cauchy's integral theorem. You can see this two page, actually, the proof will be just a page. So, you can download this article from this site. Somebody has I mean, uploaded this in his place, home, home page perhaps, you can download this. Okay. And I really urge you to read the original proof also after going through these lectures. So let us recall what you have learned in the basic thing is U is open and star shaped, of course non empty. Okay, and F is holomorphic on U and gamma is a closed path. In U, then integral of F over gamma is 0. This is Cauchy's theorem. Right? From this, using extended Cauchy Gursa, we also said that whenever gamma is a closed path like this, and suppose that is a not that is a point not on gamma then we had this formula also f of z is equal to f of w by w minus z dw and 1 over 2 pi i and there is also an n gamma of z and what was n gamma of z that was by definition dw by w minus z over gamma we called it as a winding number okay this is Cauchy integral formula this was immediate corollary of that right now what does 
global Cauchy theorem says, notice that here that the condition is geometric condition on the open set. Okay, it has to be star shaped. Okay, but what really matters is something to do with the path. Okay, the relation between the closed path inside gamma. Okay, how does it behave inside gamma? Okay, that's what this theorem is about. Let us go through that. Suppose gamma is a closed path. Assume. path in an open set, not necessarily star shape. No assumption other than openness. Oh. Like star shape, etc. R convex are simply connected. No assumption. Right? And assume that for every a which is holomorphic on u, interval of your 4 gamma is 0. Okay? Then I want to find a necessary condition. What is the necessary condition? Suppose I start with the z0 which is not in u, let us look at the function f of z equal to 1 by z minus z0. Right? Now this is holomorphic on u. Therefore, interval of f z dz over gamma must be 0. Right? But we know this integral is nothing other than, so this implies 1 by 2 pi i of integral dz by z minus z naught is 0. But we know this is nothing other than what we used to call the winding number of gamma with respect to z. How many times it goes around? Z. Sorry, Z not. Right? So, a necessary condition, so this assumption implies for every Z not not in U, N gamma Z not must be 0. So, this is a necessary condition. Necessary condition on what? On the close path gamma. If it has to have the property for every holomorphic function f on u, yeah, the path in earlier 4 gamma is 0. The global theorem says the converse is true. Okay, global version of Cauchy. The converse is true. So, what does it mean? It says the following. Let u be an open set in C. Let gamma be a closed path in U. So, that n gamma z is 0 for every z not in U. Then, For any f holomorphic on u, we have the Cauchy's theorem and our life of 4 gamma is 0. Once we have that, we also have the next result namely n and hence n gamma z equal to 1 by 2 pi i of f of w by w minus z for every z in u. Okay, this z is different, this z is different. Remember that? If you want, you should call it z naught, z naught. Okay? Therefore, you don't get confused. So, the Cauchy integral formula is also true. This is the global version. Okay? Pause, review, proceed. Understand this? Why? How do we prove this? Okay. The very interesting thing is we shall show 
Cauchy, we will prove Cauchy integral formula first. And it's a one line proof to show Cauchy integral formula implies Cauchy's theorem. This is very well known. Usually I learned it after residue theorem. Usually they will say residue theorem implies Cauchy's theorem or some such thing. Anyway, so we will prove that. Okay, so it, we have to prove only Cauchy integral formula. Now let us recall how you proved Cauchy integral formula from Cauchy's theorem in the case of star shaped domain or Cauchy integral formula for holomorphic function and annulus. Okay, we introduce an auxiliary function. Do you remember that? We define g of w equal to f, f of w minus f of z by w minus z for w not equal to z and g of z equal to f dash of z. Then we applied Cauchy's theorem to that and we got Cauchy integral formula. Okay, either for uh, the general holomorphic function or holomorphic function in annulus. Okay, that is why one should always try to understand the concepts very clearly, not remember only the proofs. Okay, the, in both the cases, this play, this auxiliary function played an important role. And Dixon's proof, okay, Dixon understood what is happening there and he exploited. In fact, all the ideas were already there, except it requires a genius to understand what really happened and there is something which everybody missed he understood okay he realized it okay it's a fantastic proof I hope you will enjoy let's go ahead okay so <coughs> so we shall prove Cauchy's integral formula first so Cauchy integral formula is n gamma z f of z equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integral f of w by w minus z this. right we want to show that implies this the path integral of f over the closed path gamma is 0 if f is holomorphic on you that is very easy you simply consider g of w this is not the g which I am talking about ok g of w equal to w minus z into f of w then this function is holomorphic right yeah, w going to f w is holomorphic and w going to w minus z is holomorphic and g at z is 0 right of course w etc are in u ok now let us apply the Cauchy integral formula for g the what is the left side the left side is n gamma into g of z in place of f we are applying g therefore that is going to be 0 but that is going to be 1 by 2 pi i right in place of f, I am going to put g of w, therefore g of w divided by w minus z, that gives me only f of w. So, therefore, this path integral is 0. So, we have proved Cauchy integral formula implies Cauchy's theorem. So, we need only to prove Cauchy integral formula. Okay? Pause, review, pro proceed. This is very easy. Right? Now, let us look at the auxiliary function g of wz where w z are in omega that means the ordered pair omega z is in so open set i am using this notation that's why u cross u okay is by definition f of w by f of z by w minus z for w not equal to z and equal to f dash of z okay when w equal to z okay now in as i said in the derivation of Cauchy integral formula for star like domains, star shaped domains, or annular regions for functions holomorphic annular region, we just use the fact for a fixed w, this map z going to f of wz, sorry, fixed z, the map w going to g of wz is holomorphic. okay that was very easy because the, this one see this is this is holomorphic for w not equal to z okay we are just fi z is fixed right this is holomorphic though no no problem but okay but this shows this is continuous at z right therefore this one you usually do by g of z okay they will only say g of z equal to this g and it is continuous at z 
Therefore, by the extended Cauchy Gursa, etc., we know this function is holomorphic. Okay, this is standard. Okay. What does first idea of Dixon is to consider G as a function of two variables. Okay, I'm just outlining the idea. We'll go through it one by one slowly. Okay. Therefore, we want to prove G is continuous. Okay, on U cross U. Not only that. Okay, and this is all right, right? The next one is this is already known. This, this one, the map W going to G of WZ or Z going to G of WZ. This is all about. You fix any one of them. Now I am considering as function of two variable. Earlier case I could not consider as a function of two variables because I fixed z okay maybe one should actually write it g z of w I fixed z therefore it depends upon w okay don't worry about it there I mean z is fixed then this is what I are considering here I am considering both the thing okay so we fix one of the variables then as a function of the other variable it's holomorphic okay this is we had uh, this I had already seen immediately after Morera's theorem Okay, we have proved this. After Morera's theorem. Okay. Anyway, we will prove it again. Don't worry, we will prove it again. Okay. This is holomorphic. The the idea of, of for Dixon is comes here. Now let us define h of z equal to interval of g of w z dw over gamma now notice that now on uh, this is for every z in u right now the first thing is i have to make sure this path integral makes sense if the path integral to make sense you know that g of w z is f of w minus f of z by w minus z for w not equal to z equal to f prime of z okay this looks okay but remember it may happen this is a path integral so this z when I want to put put this I have to make sure continuity at z z right it's a possible my z may be in gamma maybe Okay, are you following? So I uh, okay. So this is the important claim. Claim is H is holomorphic on you. Okay, this again follows from Morera's theorem as seen earlier. okay I'm just giving an idea don't worry we will go through all the proofs rigorously right so if you want let me call it h1 h1 object therefore h1 is holomorphic okay right now the idea of Dixon comes very interesting he wants to write C as U union V okay both are open sets you also know B is open set. B is defined by this following Z and C so that N gamma of Z is 0. Right? Now why do I know this is an open set? Okay, we are using a basic result about winding numbers. Okay, the map Z going to n gamma z is an integer valued continuous function so that okay n gamma z 
goes to 0 as z goes to infinity and since integer valued therefore if I take for example epsilon equal to half okay there is an r so that modulus of n gamma z should be less than half but this is an integer value that would mean for z, sorry for z mod z greater than r this should be but this is an integer value that means n gamma z must be zero therefore this is same as saying so that there is an r so that for all z so that mod z greater than zero n gamma z is zero okay right now it takes integer value therefore zero this is an isolated thing remember these are all you know, okay this is a discrete matrix space therefore if I take singleton zero is an open set therefore the inverse image will be an open set that is your V therefore V is open is that clear this is open right one more interesting thing you should observe is V contains C minus U that is U complement why remember for every z in u complement we know n gamma z is 0 right? therefore each such z belongs to b right therefore it's very clear u union u complement is contained in u union b okay but that is contained in c and this is equal to c therefore we have u union sorry u union b is c Okay, pause. You proceed. Right. Now on V, we define H two of Z to be in of f of W minus W minus Z or gamma for every Z in V. Right. Now again, we have learned Cauchy type integral formula defines an analytic function outside gamma. Right now, gamma is in in U, that is in, okay. Therefore, it does not meet V. Sorry, U complement. Right. Therefore, if Z is there, it's not going to be there, because n gamma Z is zero. This implies Z is not in gamma. Right. Therefore, this integral makes sense, and F is continuous function, where on gamma to C. Therefore, we know this is a Cauchy type integral. Right? Therefore, we know H2 is holomorphic, analytic actually, holomorphic on B. Now, remember C is written as U union B on U we have holomorphic function H1 on B we have holomorphic function H2 but if we show H1 is same as H2 on U intersection B then we can define a holomorphic function from C to C which is an entire function because they agree on the common domain right you understand right now, what next observation of Dixon is for if z is very large, remember n gamma z is 0, therefore z belongs to v, therefore h of z is nothing other than h2 of z for z very large. But so let us look at this function, this is f of w by w minus z over gamma dw. Therefore, you can see this goes to 0 as mod z goes to infinity. So, what we have shown is, okay, h is an entire function which vanishes at infinity. Therefore, h is identically 0 on C. Therefore, h1 is 0 on U, but that is quotient of formula. So remember this also I have proved as an this is the first uh, application of Lewis theorem I have given in my video lecture on Lewis theorem. Okay. 
this, this is the basic proof. You can see be, most of the ideas are already there. Okay, we just have to put the pieces together. So the ingenuity came here, considering g as a function of two variables and defining h that's to be expected h1, and then extending it to all of c by observing the way we define h1 makes sense even on v. Okay, within quotation makes sense. We will do all these things in the second lecture, but go through this. I am sure since I didn't give various details, you may be okay worried. Don't worry, we will give all the details. Okay, but look at the simple idea. What are the basic ideas? You will be very thrilled. Okay, you will be very keen to learn the complete proof also. We will do it in the next session. Take care, stay safe.